the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This week we'll be looking at um, September 18th to the 24th. And so, uh, you shouldn't do much on Sunday, but because feast days aren't celebrated liturgically on the final Sunday. But uh, this Sunday I'll mention just because um, feast is that of St. Joseph of Cupertino. And there's a movie, um, probably a lot of you have seen it before, it's called The Reluctant Saint, made in 1962. And it's a great family movie, and uh, I'll have a link to watch it for free on Formed. It's got, Formed's also got a few other, it's even got a few other things on St. Joseph of Cupertino as well. On Monday is San Saint Gennarius, or us Italians say San Gennaro, um, and this is the um, the famous saint with the liquefaction of the blood. So we read in the Roman Roman martyrology, Campania, the holy martyrs, uh, Gennarius, bishop of Benevento, Festus deacon, and Desarius, a lecturer, together with Socius, a deacon of the Church of Messino. And it goes on to say the body of Saint Gennarius was brought to Naples and buried in the church with due honors. For even now, the blood of the blessed martyr is kept in a vial, and when placed close to his head, is seen to become liquid and bubble up as if it were just taken from his veins. And this happens not only this feast day, but a few other days, times a year, almost every single year. I'll have a link for an article uh, about that as well. On the same day is uh, the Feast of Our Lady of La Salette. Um, and this interesting, the feast is celebrated um, just uh, four days after the, the Feast of Our Lady's uh, set the Seven Stars of Our Lady. And so it's a kind of unusual apparition um, in a lot of ways, the way Our Lady appears and how she's dressed and everything. It, it, it comes from 1846 in France. I'm taking this from the book um, by Joan Carol Cruz, which I recommend she see how she loves us, 50 approved apparitions of Our Lady. And so, uh, so this apparition was proved by the local bishop a few years after um, uh, it came about, and it was to a, a, a girl by the name of Melanie, who was 14 initially, and Maxim, Maximin, uh, uh, who was 11, a boy named, who was 11 years old. And it's a rather lengthy um, uh, apparition uh, message anyway, but the main thrust of the message was um, how, how, how sad Our Lady was, and she appeared she appeared first um, sitting, seated with her hands in tears. And, um, and these are a couple other images of, of the statues of the image, how she appeared. Uh, so the main, the main thrust was the, the, the fact that so, this is post-French Revolution France, middle of the 15th, uh, 19th century, how few Catholics um, observed the Lord's Day um, properly, but most weren't going to Mass, and, and of course working as well, or doing other business on, on, on Sundays. And also blasphemy. And uh, so those were kind of the main things that our, that our Lady brought about, but also there was also some rather, a couple secrets that revealed to the children and very severe chastisements. Um, it's a little too long to read it, um, but I, have, I think I have, a link, I have a link, at least one link to the, an article on it. But you can get more in this book or other books, other sources as well. But, um, but uh, so you should predict some events which seem to have been fulfilled or are being fulfilled even today. Uh, so that's on Monday. Wednesday is the. Uh, Few things. First, I'll read from the Martyrology, not the principal feast, but that of um, the in the land of Sar, the Holy Prophet Jonas or Jonah, who was buried in Geth. And so, this is the feast day of, of Saint Jonah. Um, so, you can read the book of a book that that very short book in scriptures, four rather short chapters. It could do it easily, 10 15 minutes easily. And it'd be great, it's a good family read too because it's a very lively book. There's a lot going on with the whale and everything, and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, on the same day, of course, is the feast of St. Matthew, the uh, apostle and evangelist who suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia while engaged in preaching. Um, now, um, so that's the biggest actually liturgical feast of the week on that, on, on that Wednesday. At the same time, in the traditional calendar, um, Wednesday is the first of the last set of Ember Days. So the, um, 
the number of days occur four times a year. This is the last four times in liturgical year. This is the last uh, of the four sets. And so liturgically, in the traditional calendar, it's St. Matthew will be celebrated and the um, Ember Day will be commemorated at the Mass. But um, at the same time, the fast is still uh, undertaken for those who traditionally it would be undertaken. Obviously, no one's obliged to do the Ember Day fast, but frankly, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful spiritual practice. And in the Benedictus, um, the Benedictus uh, this month, there is um, a little thing on the Ember Days by a, um, a an Italian canonist from the from the thirteenth um, century, and he says um, in it, "The remember the Ember Fasts must be kept inviolably and never change for any whim that happens to arise." He gives some reasons. First, everyone so everyone beseeches our Lord for for those who are preparing for the ordination to the priesthood, which traditionally occurs on Ember Saturday. And um, and if even if it's not occurring in your own di in your own uh, diocese, um, it's still valuable to be praying for those who might be ordained that day, or at least some might sometime soon. And he says, secondly, um, that um, it's just not fitting if some people are observing a, a perennial tradition of the church and you are not doing it, especially not fasting. And um, so, uh, so the Ember Days go back to the very early centuries of the church, and um, even though they were not observed as they should have been, it's rather sad that they're, most Catholics don't know about them and don't fast as we're called to by our Lord in, in, in the Gospel. Um, okay, and then we have, um, also on Friday I'll mention uh, from the Roman Martyrology, we have in Econium in Leo, the in Iconium in Laconia, St. Thecla, virgin and martyr, was brought to the faith by the apostle St. Paul under Emperor Nero. She was victorious over the flames and the beasts to which she was exposed to the faith of Christ. After many combats endured for the instruction of others, she went to Seleucia, where she ended her days in peace. Her memory has been eulogized by the Holy Fathers. Also on that day, um, on the new calendar, is, of course, the Feast of St. Padre Pio, or St. Pio of Petrocina. Um, there are several... Uh, videos on formed, including uh, movies, long movies like Miracle Man. I think it looks like there was another movie I found in there too, and some other video presentations also on St. Padre Pio. And I think I forgot to mention the same back on, on Wednesday also, there was a, some videos on St. Matthew the Apostle and Evangelist. So there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting feast days this week and a lot of um, some wonderful movies you can watch too to, to, to learn about and grow in devotion to the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.